let's talk about this past weekend. Actually, let's talk about this coming weekend, and we can talk about this past weekend in doing so. So he mentioned Ravens Chiefs, and that's Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes. That's pretty much what everybody's talking about. And as they rightfully should, the quarterbacks are the stars of the team. And honestly, the most important cogs of both of these teams, I would say. I don't think either one of these teams is going to be where they are without either of these quarterbacks. And what's interesting is I think this is probably the best Ravens team that Lamar Jackson has quarterbacked. You have Lamar with the best roster that he's ever had, I would say, and Patrick Mahomes with the less best roster, whatever, the the least talented roster that he's had uh, to this point. Um, And so that's what's interesting is to see, you know, who prevails in that situation. It's interesting, right, because Lamar Jackson and, and the Ravens just, they, they took out the Texans, no problem. I mean, it was close, but even at halftime, you felt like it wasn't that close. Like, if not for what, didn't they get a punt return? Was it the Texans got a punt return, I think? And that's what kind of got them in the game. But the defense of the Ravens just, just took out C.J. Stroud. And the second half really wasn't even close. I mean, you look at the final score, and you probably wouldn't even know that, the game was tied at some point and the chiefs go into Buffalo and we're going to break down Josh Allen and the bills in a minute, but the chiefs go in and Mahomes is like the coldest MF -er in the entire league and just gets it done. His receivers haven't been catching anything all season long. All of a sudden they can catch. And I feel like this is one of those games where Lamar Jackson, this could be his coming out party in terms of winning the big one, but people are kind of doubting them when this is the most talented roster that they've had. So I find the narratives kind of coming into this interesting because the Chiefs are getting the nod publicly because of all the winning that they've done. But I'm going to tell you what, this Ravens team defensively has pretty much beaten up all of the really good teams in the league. The only one they haven't played this year for the most part is the Chiefs, and we're going to find out. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think the reason that public perception is what it is at this point is because Lamar has yet to, to win that big game with the Ravens and get over the hump. So um, I, I think once that happens, maybe that starts to change a little bit. But, you know, sort of, I mean, definitely different styles, but I feel like him and Josh Allen are sort of in the same camp as far as really good, play on good teams, and just have, they're just coming up short year after year. And when when you watch them throughout the season, all indications are that, they're going to have their teams in position uh, to compete for a championship, and that's usually the case. And then somewhere along the line, they just they they just don't get it done. And it's not you can't say that it solely falls on them. I mean, football's a team game, but it's it's very easy. Like you mentioned earlier, you know, the quarterbacks they are the face of the team, and so it's easy to point the finger a little bit. And um, on the other on the other end, though, with the Chiefs, like I said, you know, he's definitely had. Mahomes definitely has the the least talented roster he's had to this point, I think, and has found a way to win games. You know, and credit to him and Andy Reid and what they've been able to do. And and they've battled some adversity. They had a really rough stretch there, um, kind of that last third of the season, really. And for them to be, I'm shocked. I would not have expected them to, which is silly to say, you know, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, but I did not expect them to be in this position at all no. and but now that they're here it's really hard to bet against them i'm just i feel like i think i texted you this as we're watching the game against buffalo and i said jerry jones should take notice because patrick mahomes and the chiefs are playing up to their competition in probably the most challenging environment that they've played in in the playoffs and the team responds wholeheartedly responds and i said this is a reflection of andy reed as a head coach and it, because I think that that is very true. I mean, you look at Andy Reid on the sideline, and he wasn't worried at all. Like, whether Buffalo, like, Buffalo got tons of momentum when they scored at the end of the half. But when you looked at the first half, and as the game started to go along, the, dif the defense of Buffalo never really stopped or had any answers for the Chiefs' offense. And the Chiefs' offense had never looked that good the entirety of the season. Efficient and just moving the ball down the field so effortlessly. Like, at one point, I think they showed the stat that the only time they'd been stopped was when they knelt down at the end of the half because there was, what, 15 seconds left? But pretty much right down the field. 
And so this is kind of one of those battles of attrition here. Like, what is going to give? Because the Ravens defense, they do a lot of scheming that is so different from the way a lot of the other defenses do it in the league. Showing a lot of blitz, pulling off and playing zone. And these things are not confusing to Mahomes, but they play very fast and very physical, which usually that doesn't go hand in hand. Playing, You either play physical or you play fast. A lot of times it's not both. And so can the Chiefs do that against a defense that is, in my opinion, vastly superior to what Buffalo put out on the on the field the other night? And can they stop Lamar Jackson? Because the Texans were not able to stop him. They were letting him into the secondary, into the open field, and it's a recipe for disaster when you play the Ravens. So I, I'm actually intrigued by this because this feels like a game that could go either way, and it's like they could go tit for tat the whole game, and it'll be a close one, I feel like. Well, and part of that, when we're talking about the Texans, you know, we're talking about a rookie head coach um, being put in that position now, you know, compared to Andy Reid. I mean, Andy Reid has coached against, you know, some of the best that have ever played the game, you know, and, and, and especially when we talk about running quarterbacks, you know, he's coached against Michael Vick and, um, you know, some of those other guys. It's a good point. Uh, that would fit that mold, you know. So, like, I definitely think he's got um, he's got some tools in his toolbox to be able to – at least on paper, schematically, um, contain. You're never going to stop a Lamar Jackson, but if you can contain him and just not let him single-handedly beat you, um, you're going to have a chance. And you're going to have to keep them off the board because their defense is so good. Like, you can't count on being able to score 35 points. Um, you know, so you're, you're going to have to limit the damage that he does. And like I said, I'm sure that Andy's, he is, uh, he's got a, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve. And the thing is, I'm at this point with Patrick Mahomes now where I think he is 100% in the conversation for most talented quarterback to ever play. And he's getting the wins, too. Like, I always said that about Aaron Rodgers. Like, when you compared Aaron Rodgers to Tom Brady, I think talent-wise, Aaron Rodgers was a better quarterback in terms of playing the actual position, making throws. But when it came to winning, Tom Brady was the better winner. Mahomes seems to embody all of that because it seems like no matter what you do to this guy— no matter how down you think that they are, he makes these plays and just continues to rise to the occasion every time. And that's something so far that Lamar Jackson has not been able to do in his very talented career thus far. And this is that moment. But I do want to ask you something because there's a lot of chatter around the interwebs about this, and I find it hilarious. Is it possible that the NFL really wants the Chiefs to make it this time because of the Taylor Swift effect, because I think there is something real there, even though I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all. Oh, I mean, it certainly wouldn't hurt. I, I, I'm guessing that if you got some NFL executives in a room and, and forced them to tell you, uh, if you said, hey, like if you can guarantee that one of these four teams is in the Super Bowl, who would you pick? Uh, from a revenue and eyeball standpoint, you're going to pick the Chiefs. It just makes sense. But at the same time, a game like the Super Bowl, I mean, how much how much bigger can you make the Super Bowl? You know, how much more appealing can you make? The Super Bowl is already the most watched program that there is, you know? So it's like, I don't know how, I don't know that it's going to move the needle that much. I mean, I definitely think it does, but I don't know how significant it could even possibly be, if that makes sense, just because of how high profile it already is. Just, and not just as football fans, but just as it's just a, it's a cultural thing for us here, right? It is, but I think, I, I wonder if the Taylor Swift effect has, piqued the interest of a larger female demographic. And Probably. with the Super Bowl, if there are females that maybe wouldn't have watched the Super Bowl before, now you add Taylor Swift to the mix. I, I agree that it's a big event already, and a lot of people consume it by going to parties, and it's sort of a, I don't want to say a family thing, but there's parties that happen now with the Super Bowl, no matter whether you like football or not. But, man, add Taylor Swift to the mix, and, and just her in the box – supposedly she's on a Tokyo tour then, so it's right. like unlikely she wouldn't go, but I still believe that she would go because I think the NFL would do whatever they could, pull whatever strings that they could to try to get her at this game. I mean, this is right now probably their most popular product in Travis Kelsey and her relationship. I mean, if you really think about it, that's probably moving the needle the most in the NFL. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if we get it to late in the third quarter – and the Chiefs are all of a sudden getting some calls, it's going to be fascinating. And I'm going to be all over social media seeing what people are chirping about because 
it's gonna it's fun that that to me is fun it's kind of like what you said with the arch maining thing like texas fans were like we weren't calling for arch maining and you're just like really then what's all this so the conspiracy theorists are going to be out and the chiefs fans are going to be insufferable yeah absolutely i heard that uh <laughs> i don't know someone who knows someone who knows someone right a source close to a source close to the situation says that she, if the chiefs are in the super bowl that she plans on being at the super bowl i, to, I so, i'm telling you like yeah. that is totally going to happen my my wife doesn't agree and a couple other people that i know don't agree because they're like she'd never let her fans down and i'm like she can go back she can tour you can't go to the super bowl more than once it it only happens once a year i'm telling you that if they make it she's going to be at that game because she's she's not dumb either she's very smart and right. that makes her money too so there's a lot of exposure, a lot of clicks, and a lot of money to be had by her being physically at the Super Bowl. So I think it's, again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything. I do find it fascinating because the league worries about longevity and making money. And Taylor Swift has represented an avenue to getting a different demographic to the product. And no matter what, what no matter what business, they're always going to try to find a way to continue to sustain or make more of what they've already made in terms of money. That's just what they're going to do, man. Like they're a business. Oh, absolutely. Now has you mentioned late in the third quarter, controversial calls. Has there been a team in the last couple of years that's been more under the microscope or scrutinized in that way uh, than more so than the chiefs? Cause I feel like there have been a lot of those types of situations um, surrounding the chiefs and, and more so than I ever felt uh, with, any other team that was like at the top of the mountain, like the Patriots for the long, the longest time, you know, when they were there, I mean, people didn't like them, but I don't, there was never this narrative that the officials were out to get them. I mean, or the officials were out to assist them in some way, shape or form. I mean, if anything, it felt at times like the NFL was actively against them. Uh, Sometimes. From time to time. And there were some self-inflicted wounds there, obviously, but the chiefs. Okay. So the difference for me about the chiefs and the calls that they have received has been the timing of when they have received them. Because I always agree or feel that calls throughout the entirety of the game dictate where you are once you get to the end of the game. Because a lot of people focus on the end of the game, but a holding call early in the first quarter could stall a drive that could have actually resulted in points. Like it could change the entire complexion of the game. So I don't feel like it's always what happens at the end. But the Chiefs have very much benefited from beneficial penalties. I'm not saying incorrect penalties, but beneficial penalties at the exact right moment that they need them. The Super Bowl, last play. AFC Championship game last year, last play. It just feels like when the Chiefs have their backs against the wall, a call seems to happen. And again, I'm not saying a call is made from the NFL like, hey, call a penalty here, because you and I have discussed all of those penalties. They've been penalties, right? But the Kadarius Tony one was one that actually went not in their favor this time. And but it was a penalty. As ticky tag as it was, it was a penalty. So we've not disagreed on the fact that they're penalties, but it's like it's inconsistent with how the game had been called up until that point. It is fascinating to me. And this is a very polarizing team in such a weird and I don't I don't know why they're polarizing. Like the Patriots were polarizing for obvious reasons, but this team, like, is so they're they're unlikable, but yet you can't really say, like, why? Because Patrick Mahomes is a very likable guy. He is. Well, the reason they are disliked is because they're the best. I know. Um, you know, they're the top dog right now, and that's just it, – it isn't funny how quickly you could go from being, like, the darling uh, always to the devil, you know, like, overnight. And Because I remember when, when they first – get when they got to their first Super Bowl with Mahomes, it's like everybody was behind the Chiefs and wanted to see the Chiefs win. And now that they've been there a couple of times, you know, I think just as as a sports society, we're all like, OK, you've had your time, time for you to move on and let, let somebody else have a crack at it. It ain't a sports society thing. It's a society thing. True. We as human beings, especially in this country, do not like it when somebody or some entity becomes too successful. And that it has a lot to do with like you see somebody who makes more money than you, no matter how they got it, whether they work their ass off to get it, you hate it because they have more than you. When you go on a personal journey, lose weight, do something, there's haters because you have been more successful or there is some element of yourself that they can't control, right, or something like that. And this is the same thing. The Patriots, the first time they won a Super Bowl, great story, right? We're all Patriots, 9-11, everything's great. 
As soon as they win two more, that's it. You're done. And you really can't win more. And you can't get the stink of that off of you either. People, unless you're from Pittsburgh, like there's P Pittsburgh fans, like a lot of people don't like Pittsburgh. Nobody likes New England, the Cowboys, Notre Dame, you name uh, Alabama, you name them, right? All the uber successful franchises, teams, whatever. Eventually, they become hated. And it's the only way that you go back to not caring about them is when they start to lose. But some of them sustain winning all the time. And I know, I, I, it's just it's just a thing. We can't handle it when somebody else is happy, basically. That's absolutely true. Um, because, let's say that the Lions, that the Lions win the Super Bowl this year. I guarantee you, like, if they, they'll get next year. If they're back in it next year, back in the mix, say win the Super Bowl again or get to the Super Bowl. I mean, they got like a, a three-year window, I would say, to be still the darlings. And after that, if they continue to have this kind of success, everybody's going to turn on them just the way they turn on the Chiefs, um, just the way they turn on everyone else. Uh, and I mean, the Cowboys, that's why you know, people say, you know, America's team, but there are not just anymore. as many, not anymore, but I'm saying like there are just as many people that hate the Cowboys because of how good they were in the early 90s. You know what I mean? And uh, it, it's fascinating. You know, I'd be interested to hear some, you know, uh, a psychologist or something like break that down like why that is and it could be as simple as we don't like seeing other people we like to see other people get something but then like we don't want them to stay there for whatever right. reason but you see this all the time you see it in people who didn't get something so i'll use this as a it's a political thing but i don't see it as political like student loans right i had to pay all my student loans no problem and other people are going to get them forgave forgiven and while that upsets me in a way, because I'm like, damn, I paid my student loans off. Like, I wish I could have some of that money back. I don't care if they get it because it, these things happen all the time. Family, medical leave, uh, so many women did not get any time off when they had kids. And now in the federal government, you get 12 weeks of paid leave. And it took what, 100 and something years of like, you know, to get this done. So a lot of women were jealous, but then there was a lot of women who were like, I'm glad that people got something that I didn't get. But for the most part, we generally tend to hate it when somebody else has something that we don't. But then again, man, that's how the economy works because these these promotions, like boxing promotions, these leagues, they bank on people watching to watch somebody else lose. Do you know how much money Floyd Mayweather made because people tuned in on pay-per-view to watch him lose, which he never did, and that sells. So they're, they're trafficking in it heavily, and I think that's just, it's a symptom of being human. I, I don't know, I mean, I can't say that I'm immune to it. I'm sure there are times when I'm like, God, I hate that person. I mean, all the other podcasts that follow us in the sports realm probably feel that way about us. You know, when we <laughs> when when we see our 14 downloads a, an episode, and they're like, God, I wish I could get up to those numbers. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, I from a, uh, a polarizing standpoint, I think the the most interesting Super Bowl matchup would be the Lions and the Chiefs because you would have that perfect overlap of you know, the America's darlings and the Lions and the the villain and the Chiefs. And so you you get to compound your your affection and your hatred all in one um in a game like that. And you you know and those types of matchups draw in the casuals. You get more than just the you know, like if it's a Ravens 49ers Super Bowl, I think that yeah, I mean I, there's there's not you're not gonna get a very polarizing reaction from the country as a whole you know i i think most people would be indifferent outside of those particular fan bases but i think you get the chiefs in you're going to have some a significant national interest against them probably and if the lions get in you'll have a significant nationwide support for them so uh that that's why i think those two teams would be it'd be a home run for the nfl 